Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 10, we're going to roll the 6SN7. The 6SN7 was first introduced in 1939 by, by you guessed it, RCA. It has an octal base, so 8 pins, and is a dual triode, so 2 tubes in 1. And you can see the 2 plates here. With an MU, or gain of 20, early RCA data sheets called it a medium gain tube. The 6SN7 has had one of the longest runs of any tube. Now with any long-lived tube, you get lots of variants in generations, with changes that you should be aware of. The first generation was simply called the 6SN7 GT. GT just means glass tube, as opposed to a metal tube. Next came the GTA and the GTB. Two of the key specifications for any tube is maximum plate voltage and maximum plate dissipation in watts. Others are important, but let's focus on these two. The first generation, GT, has a maximum plate voltage of 300 volts DC and maximum plate dissipation of 2.5 watts, or combined 5 watts. Remember, dual triode. Now, plate voltage is easy. That is the maximum voltage the tube can safely operate at. So what is this plate dissipation? In short, this is the maximum power handling of this tube measured in watts. Exceed that and you shorten the tube life or end it quickly with a bit of drama. The, six, the second generation, the GTA, here's one right here, with a maximum plate voltage of 450 volts DC, or an increase of 150 volts, which works out to a 50% increase, and not surprisingly, maximum watts is either 5 watts per plate, or a combined total of 7.5 watts, again, an increase of 50%. The third generation was the GTB, with the same voltage and wattage as the GTA. Here's a GTB right up here. The main difference is in the heater specification and nothing for us to worry about. So why is this important? If you want to use a vintage 6SN7 GT with its lower maximum plate voltage and lower wattage rating in a modern circuit designed for the GTA or B, you may exceed its maximum ratings and bad things may happen quickly. Okay. Enough history and specifications. Let's get into reviewing a bunch of 6SN7s. And talking about reviews, you've heard me say this before. Every tube can sound different in every amp. But why is that? It's simple. Different, amp, different amps will have different power supply sections, different circuit designs, and most importantly, in the case of power amps, different output transformers. On top of all of that, Tubes themselves are somewhat variable. However, in my experience, a good sounding tube in one system generally sounds good in most systems, and a bad sounding tube generally sounds bad in all systems. All of these tubes are low noise and low microphonic. Okay, first up is my 57 RCA 6SN7 GTB. It's a very common tube. Let's take a quick look at it. It's flat. It's got flat black plates. So, how did this sound? The bass was good, with nice tone. Mid-range was very nice, a bit forward and dynamic. Treble was detailed and clear. Overall, a nice tube and affordable. Next are the GE 6SN7 GTA and B. Here's an A. Here's a B. This has been rebranded Zenith. Zenith would buy in bulk from companies like GE and then put their own brand and sell them at their own retail store. So let's take a look at the plates. 
plates are flat gray plates. Two plates the same, base is the same, and they both have the same side getter. You can see, you can see the chrome here on the side. These are virtually identical tubes. There's probably some minor differences, but for the purposes of reviewing, we're going to review them together. So, how did they sound? Bass is forward with a nice tone. Mid-range is detailed, forward, clear, and detailed with a very nice sound stage. And treble is very nice and detailed. Overall, both these tubes are nice sounding and best of all, affordable. I would recommend these based on the level of performance versus the cost. Next is my number 140 Marconi 6SN7 GTB. Let's take a look at the elevated T-plate. They're black. You can see, I hope, it's got waste chrome, so it's got a bottom getter hiding behind here. And we'll talk a little bit more about these elevated T-plates later on. In fact, many early 6SN7s were built along this basic pattern of elevated T-plates. But how did they sound? Bass was detailed and natural. Mid-range was detailed and full. Treble was clear and detailed with lots of air. When people say lots of air, they're talking about high frequencies. And much of this is the acoustics of the room or the tube simulating this through distortion. Basically, it helps make the recording sound live and as a result, more realistic. When you hear it, you'll know what it is. Overall, a nice tube, and the sound reminds me most of 1950s jazz recordings. Unique and different. Not for everyone. Next are a couple of Russian 6-8-Cs, or in English 6-N-8-S, equivalent to our 6-S-N-7 GTB. We'll look at tubes made by Photon, and M-E-L-Z. Some people say MELTS, but it's, it actually stands for a long, big long factory name, or a collective manufacturing name, um, based in Novosibirsk. Okay, together, these are very similar tubes. Let's take a quick look at them. There's your MELTS factory symbol. These are all new old stock from 1976. You can see the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, 6H8C. And this sort of triangular box here, that is the symbol for photon. And these are all new old stock from 1965. You can see that they have elevated gray T plates. Remember, we're talking about gray T plates. This one has a bottom cupped, round cupped getter and a little bit of waste chrome. This one, you can't see it. It has a bottom getter that is a plate getter with waste chrome, of course. Okay, so how do they sound? Bass is detailed with nice tone, maybe a touch forward. Mid-range is nice and detailed, and treble is detailed and clear. These are nice sounding vintage tubes and very affordable. I'm going to award them a Best Buy for type. Next is the Mullard 5692. Mullard never made a 6SN7, but this is a mil-spec version that is an equivalent, and it is crazy expensive. So, same thing. Elevated gray T-plates, made in England, of course. Bottom getter with a round cup with a bit of waste chrome. So how do they sound? Bass was rich and a bit forward. Mid-range was detailed and slightly forward. 
Treble was just okay. It lacks some sparkle. Overall, a nice tube with the famous Mullard mid-range. A well-made variant, and probably a long-lived tube as well because of the mill spec, but very expensive. Next is my number 26, Sylvania 6SN7 GTB. Sylvania is probably best known for having produced many beautiful sounding 6SN7s. Let's take a quick look at it. This has, let's see if we can roll the plates, this has black T plates that are angled in. And even though Sylvania had quite a few variations on how their plates were built, this was the mid to later variation that you'll pro if you find a Sylvania 6SN7, this will probably be the tube. It'll look like this. And um, so how do they sound? Well, the bass was detailed and rich and a bit forward. Mid-range was slightly forward and nice and rich. Treble was nice and finely detailed. Like most Sylvania 6S and 7s, a very nice tube and fast becoming expensive. In a minute, I'll show you one path to affordable 6S and 7s by Sylvania. Okay, as usual, I've saved the best to last. This is my number 5 Sylvania 6S and 7 GT, also known as a bad boy. So named because of the wicked good tone this tube produces. Let's take a quick look at how this tube is made. See the elevated black T plates? They're way up at the top. You can see a lot of waste chrome. That means it's got a bottom getter. Now, remember all of the other tubes that we looked at that had elevated T plates. Aha, you say. That is a good hint. Okay, enough said about that. But how did they sound? Well, the bass was rich and full and most definitely forward. What do I mean by forward? Well, imagine you had a tone control just for the bass and you turned that bass up ever so slightly. That's forward. Okay, on to the mid-range. It was nice, well-balanced, detailed, and it popped. On top of all of that, it had a nice sound stage. And the treble was perfect, detailed, and precise. At the end of this listening session, I did not want to roll this tube out. It's fairly rare, and it's become very expensive. Okay, what to do about high-priced vintage 6SN7s? Well, if you're building a new amp or rebuilding an old one, you could switch the heater supply from 6 volts to 12 volts. And presto, a whole world of affordable 12SN7s become available. Remember, all of the standard early versions of the, of the 6SN7 have a 6 volt heater. So, let's take a look at some as an example that I've got. So this is a brand new flight. So a flight comes in its own holding box. In this case, the flight is five. That's pretty normal. Let's just get this out. These are all mil spec G Jan, so Joint Army Navy 12SN7 GTs. They're all from 1967, so they're probably mil military surplus brown bases, and they're truly new old stock. Let's take a look at them. The printing on these tubes would fall off with just a puff of wind, and you can see it's all intact. You can see 
that we've got the angled, the later version of the Sylvania plate, an angled black plate inwards. And many military tubes had brown bases. Don't ask me why. And in this case, they have a large round top getter. So you'll see chrome on the dome. A beautiful tube, and for what they are, affordable. If you enjoyed this YouTube, please subscribe. And if you watch till the end, here's a special discount code just for the 6SN7 and 12SN7 tube. It expires next Thursday, just in time for the next tube lab. Well, that was fun. This is Jim from Valves and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.